Hi everyone. Uh, so let's continue with uh, uh, doing one question from the institute's material, uh, Institute ICI's uh, practice manual for the old syllabus. Okay, and post that if I'm still left with uh, some time, I will continue with one small topic. Uh, otherwise, I'll make it a part two of the same lecture. Okay, so let's start off with one example in the institute's uh, question. All right, in the institute's practice manual, it's question number fifty-one of uh, chapter number five. Chapter number five is Indian capital markets. That is more like a you know a dustbin chapter. Anything that does not fit anywhere else in the institute's material is thrown into this. Okay, so chapter number five, page question. I was just joking. Huh? Question number fifty-one, page number forty. Okay, the current market price of an equity share of Penchant Limited, or I don't know, P Limited, is four hundred and twenty. So the current price is four hundred and twenty. Within a period of three months. The maximum and the minimum price of it is expected to be five hundred and four hundred respectively. Okay, so uh, it's indicating you a binomial model indirectly. The current share price is four hundred and twenty. Within a maturity of three months, it's saying that the spot price can go up either to five hundred or it can fall down to four hundred. The risk-free rate of interest is eight percentage per annum. What should be the value of a three-month call option? Time to maturity is three. And the val the option that they are asking us to value is call option under the risk neutral method. We have not read the and uh, we have not read the risk neutral method. But let us solve the same question using delta hedging and portfolio replication. Okay, and then they have given with a strike price of four hundred and fifty, given that e power point zero two is one point zero two zero two. Okay, so the eight percentage when one when they give you over here as e power point zero two, it basically means that they are asking you to use continuous compounding. Because eight percent per annum is nothing but eight percentage for one year. Okay, what we would have otherwise normally done was we would have done eight into three by twelve because three months. Okay, and we would have used two percentage. Okay, two percentage means one point zero two. Okay, but when they have given us e power point zero two value, what they are indirectly trying to say is do not use discrete compounding, use continuous compounding or continuous discounting. And e raised to the power point zero two is one point zero two zero two is what they're saying. Okay, so had we not used continuous compounding, the value would have been just one point zero two, right? But this extra last two decimals of zero two has come up because we are now using continuous compounding instead of discrete compounding. Okay, so let let me quickly just write the facts. So we have current share price of four hundred and twenty. This could go up either to five hundred. Or this could fall down to four hundred. Okay, and then risk-free rate of interest is eight percentage. RF is eight percentage, and then time to maturity is equal to three months. Okay. Yeah. So now. first let's do it using the delta neutral method okay under the delta neutral method or delta hedging approach the most common method that we actually saw was write a call and hold delta shares okay we write a call and hold delta shares right holding basically means buying delta shares right we write a call and then we hold delta shares so it is basically c minus and delta s plus okay where minus indicates that i'm selling selling or writing a call option and s plus indicates i am buying shares okay and i'm buying not one share but i'm buying delta shares okay so firstly we need to basically calculate the value of delta okay For value of delta, first let's find out what the value of the option is going to be at maturity. Okay, the strike price was given again as four hundred and fifty. Okay, so with the strike price of four hundred and fifty, on the upper side you have a payoff of fifty, and on the bottom side you have a payoff of zero. Okay, because the strike price, I'm just confirming that the strike price was four fifty. Yeah. Okay, so the future spot price at the upper node is five hundred. Therefore, the payoff will be five hundred minus four fifty, which is fifty. And on the bottom side, the call gets lapsed; it does not get exercised, and therefore the payoff is actually zero. All right. Now the delta, like we saw earlier, 
is nothing but y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Agreed? Where y2 is the value of the call option and x2 is the value of the share, of the underlying share. Okay? Because y is influenced by x. Okay? x influences y, where x is the share price and y is the call option price. Okay? y2 minus y1 is 0 minus 50. y2 is 0, y1 is 50. So 0 minus 50 divided by, I think it was 400. Let me just see. 400 minus 500, which is equal to minus 50 divided by minus 100 which is equal to 0.5, okay? Alternatively, you can take y2 as 50 and y1 as 0. Then what would happen is 50 minus 0 divided by 500 minus 400, okay? Because y2 will then, y, this will be x2, y2, and this will be x1, y1. So it will be 50 minus 0 divided by 500 minus 400, which will again give you 50 divided by 100, which is 0.5, okay? So what you take as y2 and what you take as y1 does not matter. Okay, so delta is 0.5. So basically your strategy is C minus and 0.5 S plus. Okay, you write one call and for every one option written, you will buy 0.5 shares. Okay, we said that this will actually create a risk-free portfolio. This is going to create a risk-free portfolio, a risk-free portfolio or a delta neutral portfolio. Okay, we are calling it delta neutral because <clears throat> this portfolio is going to be neutral towards changes in share price. Whether the share price at T equal to 3 uh, is 500 or 400, the value of this portfolio is going to remain constant. Okay, and that is the reason we are actually calling it delta neutral, right, or a risk-free portfolio. Okay, so first let's calculate the payoff of this portfolio. Okay, the payoff of this portfolio. So... There are two possible prices. Future spot price, I'm calling it as FSP. Okay, one first situation and second situation. Under first situation, it could be 500. And under second situation, it could be 400. Okay, if I calculate the value of this portfolio, okay, Let's say in the first situation, I write a call, okay? The call's strike price is 450 when the future share price is 500, okay? Therefore, the holder will actually exercise the option and I as a writer, I will have to pay $50 to the holder, okay? So for me on the call option, I'm going to have a cash outflow of 50, which I'm denoting in brackets, meaning cash outflow, okay? But then I have 0.5 shares, Okay, the 0.5 shares that I have will be worth 0.5 into 500, which means equal to 250. Okay, or otherwise I'll write just the 0.5 shares will be worth 0.5 into 500, which is equal to minus 50 plus 250 that equals 200. Okay, so the value of this port, the payoff of this particular portfolio, the payoff of this particular portfolio is going to be 200 on the upside. Okay, and obviously, even before calculating, the payoff of this portfolio should be 200 on the bottom side as well, because we have called this a risk free portfolio. Okay, if we get an, a different payoff at the bottom side, of course, this payoff is not, I mean, of course, this portfolio is not risk free then, right? But we started saying that this portfolio is risk free and therefore at the bottom node also, you should get the same payoff of 200. Okay, so let's look at what happens at the bottom node. Okay, at the bottom node, the call option actually lapses because the future share price is less than the strike price. Okay, therefore, your, val your cash outflow on the call option is zero. Okay, but then you have 0.5 shares and the value of one share is 400. Therefore, the value of 0.5 shares is going to be 0.5 into 400, which equals 200. Okay, and see these both are equal and that is the reason we actually call this a risk-free portfolio. Okay, the payoff of this portfolio is actually certain. All right, the, <clears throat> the payoff is, is independent of what the future share price is going to be like. Okay, now 
if the payoff of this portfolio is 200, we then calculate the price of the portfolio today. Okay. For instance, when you're buying a bond, you have future cash inflows in the form of coupon and redemption value. Okay. For, for receiving those coupons and redemption value, you have to pay a price today, which is calculated as the present value of those future coupons and redemption value. Okay. So to receive those future cash flows, you have to pay a price today. Okay. Similarly, if you want to receive a certain cash flow of 200 at T equal to three, you have to pay a price today. Okay. That price is going to be the price of this portfolio. All right. And since this is a risk-free portfolio, the discount rate that you need to use is the risk-free discount rate. Okay. Because cash flows that are not risky will be discounted using risk-free discount rate. All right. So the price of portfolio is going to be 200. Okay. Generally we would have done 200 divided by one plus R where R is the risk-free rate. But since over here, they have actually given us E power 0 0.02, we have to make use of this. So it will be 200 divided by E power 0 0.02. Okay. Another alternative way of writing this would be 200 into E power minus 0 0.02. Okay, e power minus 0 0.02 is nothing but 1 divided by e power 0 0.02. All right, so 200 divided by e power 1.02, they have already given us the value of e power 0.02, which is 1.0202, which equals 195.70 or 69 rather, I don't know whatever 195.69 okay so the price of the portfolio portfolio which consists of c minus and delta s plus okay this is the price of the portfolio so if you pay 195.69 today then you will receive a certain cash flow of 200 at t equal to 3 Okay, so this is the price of this portfolio. And this portfolio actually has two components. One, a call option written and the second, delta shares bought. Okay, if you have two portfolios, security A and security B, the price of the portfolio will be equal to the price of security A plus price of security B, right? So the price of the portfolio should be equal to the price of its components, right? So 195.69 is the price of the portfolio it has two components one c minus and delta s plus okay this price of the portfolio is at t equal to zero remember right this price of the portfolio is what you have to pay today okay 195.69 is the price of the portfolio today okay let me denote this price as cash outflow okay i'm denoting it as negative because it's going to be a cash outflow today right Delta S, S plus, you know the share price today. All right, share price today is nothing but 420, right? 420 is the value of each share today. All right, and then, but you are buying not one share, you're buying 0.5 shares. Okay, so the cost of 0.5 shares is going to be 0 0.5 into 420, which equals 210. Okay, so you have a cash outflow. So the, the cost of the portfolio is 195.69, which means the cash outflow of the portfolio is 195.69. Of that, you have a cash outflow of 210 for buying 0.5 shares, which automatically by default means that there should be a cash inflow. There should be a cash inflow when you're writing a call option of 210 minus 195.69 which equals 14.31. This is a balancing figure. Okay. It is nothing but 210 minus 195.69 is equal to 14.31. Okay. And this represents a cash inflow. It is a cash inflow, all right? It's a cash inflow because you have written a call option. You have an obligation to deliver shares in future. Okay, you have an obligation to pay in future. Okay, so therefore this is a cash inflow. Again, if just I'm summarizing, 195.69 is the price of the portfolio today, which has two components. One, a call option written, 
and second delta shares purchased okay the the cash outflow on purchase of delta shares is 210 okay the cost of the total portfolio is 195 the cost of one of the component is 210 which automatically means that on the remaining component you don't have a cash outflow but you have a cash inflow okay so you receive 14.31 at t equal to 0 because everything all i mean this was at t equal to 0 420 was at t equal to 0 so obviously this is also going to be at t equal to 0 okay so for writing a call option you are receiving 14.31 today this is nothing but the value of the call option okay this is what the holder is paying to you as a writer for undertaking the obligation okay and what we wanted to find out was the value of the call option right so the value of the call option is nothing but 14.31 and this should ideally match with the institute's answer where the institute has done it under risk neutral method they've not done it under delta approach delta hedging approach but the answer should be the same okay i am hoping that the answer is the same they have got 13.96 we have got about 14.31 it could be because of rounding difference i'll just check in case uh, it is because of rounding difference i'll just mention it as part of the description below okay so just have a look at it but i think our i don't think we've gone wrong anywhere it should be rounding all right so we have got 14.31 now let's quickly do it under uh, portfolio replication as well and if we have the same answer under portfolio replication then we can confidently say that our answer is right and their answer is wrong let's see okay so under portfolio replication if you remember we said that a call option can be replicated by leveraged stock buying okay a call can be replicated by leveraged stock buying okay see this this method is not that important from the viewpoint of ca examination if for cfa and frm yes it is important okay so what you essentially uh, what you essentially do in uh, uh, replicating portfolio is we say that a call options payoff can be replicated by the payoff of uh, another portfolio which is nothing but leveraged stock buying so we had 420 which could go up to 500 or which could fall to 400 okay the value of the call option at maturity could be either 50 or it could be zero okay we want to replicate the payoff of the call option using a portfolio of leveraged stock buying okay so i am assuming that we borrow y we borrow y and we buy h shares okay we know that h is nothing but delta if you remember we concluded that we borrow y and we buy h shares okay so at maturity at t this we are doing at t equal to zero okay apologies this is actually being done at t equal to zero okay so at t equal to three which is on the maturity of the option contract we will sell h shares and we will have to repay the maturity value of y okay we will sell h shares and we will have to repay y okay when we sell h shares where h is actually delta okay we are going to sell we are going to receive 0 0.5 into 500 okay and then we are going to repay repay being denoted by negative y along with interest which is nothing but 1.0202 which the question has given okay at the bottom node we will be selling 0.5 shares where each share is worth 400 and then we will have to repay y into 1.0202 remember i was telling you again and again that the maturity value of y does not depend on what the share price is right so the what we are reducing remains the same at both ends right okay you can subst you can find out why either at the bottom node or at the upper node you can do it either ways i am going to find it out at the bottom node because over here the value of the call option is zero so it becomes easier okay so i equate zero with the payoff of this portfolio zero is equal to 200 minus y into 1.0202 okay which means if this minus y into 1.0202 goes this side i will have 1.0202 y is equal to 200 okay where y is going to be 200 divided by 1.0202 
which we also calculated above as 196.04. Uh, was this the same amount that we got above? Okay, no, I actually got 195.69 over here. Okay, maybe this should have actually been 196.04. Anyways, okay, so I got 196. That is the reason our answer was not exactly matching with the institute probably. So I got Y as 196.04. Y basically represents borrowing that needs to be made today. Borrowing to be made at t equal to zero. Agreed? That is the borrowing that needs to be made at t equal to zero. And we saw that and ideally this should have been equal to the price of the risk-free portfolio today under the delta hedging approach. There is some difference because probably I made some mistake while calculation. Okay, that's fine. Okay, and this 196.04 that you have got over here will also fit the above equation. Okay, if you substitute 196.04 over here, what you will get is 0.5 into 500 minus this amount will be exactly equal to 50, which is the payoff of the option. Okay, so we have basically created a portfolio where the portfolio is borrow 196.04 and buy 0.5 shares. Okay, and we are now saying that this is a replicating portfolio. It replicates the payoff of a option of a call option replicates call option okay when we are saying that this replicates call option it basically means that the cash outflow that you have on buying this portfolio today will actually be the cash outflow that you have to pay for buying a call option okay if there are two portfolios which have the same payoff in future okay and the payoff of a call option over here is 50, either 50 or 0 Okay, and this by borrowing 196 and buying 0.5 shares will also have the same payoff depending on the share price. Okay, if the share price is 500, the payoff of this particular portfolio will also be 50. If the price of the share is 400 at t equal to 3, the, this portfolio will also have a payoff of 0. Okay, so we have basically created a replicating portfolio. The cash outflow at t equal to 0 for creating this replicating portfolio should be equal to the cash outflow on the on buying the option as a holder okay so the cash we will now find the cash outflow that we are going to incur for replicating for this replicating portfolio okay for this replicating portfolio when we borrow 196.04 i actually have a cash inflow of 196.04 okay and then i buy delta shares or buy 0.5 shares where each share is actually 420 okay so when i'm buying 0.5 shares i have to Pay 210. All right. So I reduce 210 because that's a cash outflow for me. The net amount is 13.96. Okay. 13.96 is a cash outflow, which basically means that I will have to incur 13.96 to buy this portfolio which exactly replicates the payoff of an option, okay? Which means this portfolio will have a payoff of either 50 or zero, which means if I buy this portfolio, I will receive a payoff of either 50 or zero. And for buying that portfolio, I need to pay 13.96 today, okay? Similarly, a call option also has a payoff of either 50 or zero. And for buying that call option, I need to pay, I, I as a holder will have to pay 13.96 to the writer of the option. This is premium for call option, okay? And uh, I think this matches with the institute answer. Basically, I think I made a small mistake over here. Uh, 200 divided by 1.0202, I don't know what I did. It should have been 196.04. It should have been 196.04. And if it is 196.04, 210 minus 196.04 as a balancing figure would have been uh, would have matched exactly with the institute's answer of 13.96 okay 13.96 should have been the right answer all right um, so i hope it was good it was a good practice uh, i hope i think this was a good revision also of the logic underlying as well okay so i think i will continue with the part 2 as that small topic that i wanted to discuss i will continue it as part of as part of i mean as a part 2 to the same lecture okay
थैंक यू गाइज